Ahead in the next hour, GMSA and the San Antonio community rallying to help a high school band after heavy rain damaged some instruments last weekend. What's being done for those students? Plus, trick-or-treaters can expect a chilly night tonight in more ways than one. What you need to know to keep your family safe before kids go knocking on doors. And up next, Texas Rangers two wins away from a World Series title. How they're making history already after last night's win on the road against the Arizona Diamondbacks. And the roads are wet in some spots, and it looks like we have spotted our first problem of the morning on the roads at I-10 and Hebner showing up on Transguide. We'll talk to RJ after the break. This morning on GMSA, San Antonio police are investigating an overnight shooting on the city's southwest side. What they're saying about the suspect, plus... Uh, the cops actually told me that the only way to prevent this from happening again is just not to have that car anymore. The social media challenge continues to cause problems for Kia car owners. We'll look at which cars thieves are still targeting the most this year. And looking out there with live cam, nice and cold, 44 degrees. No, it's not January. It is Halloween. Happy Halloween, everyone. Live from KSAT 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is 6 a.m. on your October 31st. That's right. Happy Halloween. You can see behind us. Thank you for starting your morning with us. And I uh, hope you're prepared for a nice day today. You called your dress Freddy Krueger dress today? Yes. Well, Alex. Our producer? <laughs> yeah, she was like, your, your dress looks like Freddy Krueger. All you're missing the is air. the... The, the razor fingers. Yeah, and the hat. Yeah. Well, Mike's, <laughs> Mike's here with the Halloween forecast. Happy Halloween, yeah. buddy. I'm just not seeing the whole Freddy Krueger thing going on. Well, there. You know, anyway, yeah, a, a stylish Halloween. Freddy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, it's going to be fantastic for trick or treating. We're all starting off uh, kind of dampish out there. Had a couple of showers uh, this morning, and we still have a few of them out there. It looks like the road at uh, I 10, this is looking out toward the medical center from uh, the 410 I 10 interchange. It's still kind of on the damp side, so you still want to sort of take it easy. We've got a few little uh, leftover showers around the area. We've had one or two of them that moved through, even a couple of more right here in town as of right now, and some down there on the uh, southeast side, more further on down to the south. That's pretty much about it. That's going to continue to work its way on out of here throughout the morning, but it will still be on the damp side this morning. So again, allow yourself a little extra time as far as heading into work and school. Mid 40s on average around the area, a couple of 30s out there in the hill country. Decent breeze right now, nine mile per hour wind at the airport, 14 at New Braunfels, and there are a couple of gusts still gusting out there in Lost Maples at 19. So we do have somewhat of wind chill to deal with. And with that kind of dampness out there from some of the, uh, the light sprinkly showers, yeah, you definitely want to kind of turn up your collar this morning. Now we're going to be clearing out beautifully later on today. Molds on the moderate side, ragweed grass are low. And uh, this morning we will stay pretty steady. A couple of those leftover showers. Then we start to clear out nicely by late morning and plenty of sunshine by noon up to 53 degrees. And then we're going to top off later on today. Lots of sunshine up to 60. It's going to be kind of breezy this afternoon, but then once the sun goes down, those winds are going to be dying down. Clear skies, dry air, light wind. That means temperatures are going to drop off pretty quickly later on this evening. So if you're heading out to do a little trick or treating, make sure you take a jacket. And then it gets really cold tomorrow morning. Got some freeze warnings for the Hill Country. Going to show you that. Take a look ahead. First weekend of November. Big change coming. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, RJ Marquez. What's going on, sir? All right, Mike. Starting to see things build up. We kind of expect this as now we get into our 6 o'clock hour. Taking a look here at a stalled vehicle there. I-10, the westbound lanes at Hebner. So see, we do have emergency crews out there. And traffic is getting through there on the westbound lanes. But again, something to just kind of keep in mind if you're headed out on the northwest side right now. We'll take a look at how that looks in the map here in just a bit. Um, we also have another stalled vehicle being reported here on the uh, northeast side. This is I-35 at Benz Engelman Road and uh, right before the I-35-410 kind of merger there. And again, uh, this is going to be affecting some traffic there over by Fort Sam. But you can see traffic is moving along still in this area. Again, 35 northbound at Benz Engelman. As we take a look at our maps, you can see no major crashes to speak of. But again, we're starting to see a lot of these stalled vehicles kind of pile up. As we mentioned, this one here, I-10 westbound at Hebner Road, uh, not causing 
causing any major traffic delay, but we did see emergency crews on the scene there. We do have another stalled vehicle being reported right now on the west side, US 90 eastbound at Ray Ellison. I was looking at the cameras in that area. It doesn't appear to be uh, causing any significant delay. But again, we're starting to see a lot of things kind of pop up throughout uh, the entire San Antonio area. These being the biggest things right now there. 35 at Benzinga Bend, I-10 and Heapner. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. People who live at a local apartment complex are waiting to learn the status of their homes. Fire got them out of bed and sent them out into the cold. Katrina Weber is live at the scene at Hebner in Fredericksburg. Have you heard how many apartments were impacted, Katrina? Well, we have not had any official word just yet, but I can tell you based on the numbers here, it looks like there are 12 units in this half of the building where this fire was. Uh, we did see firefighters on top of the roof pulling away parts of it, meaning that there is probably fire that got into the attic of this building and they were pouring down water. So it's possible that all of the apartments here could be impacted <clears throat> in one way or another, either by the fire smoke or water. Uh, still waiting to get some official word from the fire department on exactly what happened. Uh, we heard one resident say that uh, he was alerted to the fire. He was told to get out. And it seems that everyone in this building did get out safely based on what we've heard and seen here at the scene. Uh, they are here out in the cold, many of them sitting uh, in their cars or standing around just waiting to get back inside and see what may have been damaged in their homes. It looks like the fire did start on the third floor because that's where we saw the firefighters in those third floor apartments uh, working very early on. But again, possibly this entire building affected by either the smoke, water or fire. And for right now, it looks like the entire building, which is about 16 or 18 units, has no electricity. Reporting live in the Medical Center, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. New this morning, San Antonio police looking for a suspect. They say shot a man in his car on the city's southwest side. Happened last night just before 10 in the area of Lou 410 and Ray Ellison. Police say the suspect got into a vehicle with the victim for a possible drug deal. That's when police say the suspect shot the man and took off in a different vehicle. The victim managed to drive to a nearby convenience store to get help. At last check, he was in critical condition. We are also working to learn more about a late night hit and run that left a man dead on the highway. This happened a little after 1030 last night on Highway 90 near Agni Road. Now that's on the west side of town. Police tell us the man was on the main lanes when he was hit. He died at the scene. We're told there were no witnesses to the crash. Right now, San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers are searching for the suspects in a couple of cases. We'll start with a deadly shooting at a north side apartment complex. The victims in this, in this case, Jeremy Sanchez and Aaron Espinosa, both 23 year olds. This happened back in July. Now, officers were called to the Allon at Castle Hills Apartments on Lock Hill Selma near West Avenue. After shots were fired, police say Sanchez and Espinosa were meeting someone at the complex at the time of the shooting. Later, the two men and their vehicle were reported missing. Their bodies were found a few days later at a different location. Police are also searching for a wanted fugitive 21 year old David Guerrera Macias. He is accused of deadly conduct with the firearm. We're told he possibly shot a dog in a neighborhood here in San Antonio and reportedly streamed it online. If you have any information about either case, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at number on your screen 210-224-STOP. 607, now to new developments in the Israel-Hamas war. Israel is rejecting calls for a ceasefire as it steps up air and ground strikes on Hamas targets in Gaza. As ABC's Justin Finch reports, concerns are growing about those Hamas is holding captive. The Israeli government releasing new video of a heartfelt reunion. Showing Israeli military private Ori Megiddish now home with her family after clearing a medical examination. The Israel Defense Forces say Megiddish was rescued during an IDF ground operation in Gaza, where she was held captive for more than three weeks. In Chicago, Israeli-American Natalie Renan has returned home. She and her mother were among the first Hamas hostages freed. Why are we celebrating the return of Natalie back to her home in Chicago? We have to remember that there's still 239 hostages in the hands of Hamas in the Gaza Strip. On the war front, a relentless exchange of rocket fire between Israel and Hamas. Israel rejecting calls for a ceasefire. Just as the United States would not agree to a ceasefire after the bombing of Pearl Harbor, 
or after the terrorist attack of 9-11. Israel will not agree to a cessation of hostilities with Hamas. The White House supporting Israel, but... What we have said should be considered and explored are temporary localized humanitarian pauses to allow aid... Across Gaza, civilian suffering. UNICEF reporting more than 400 children in Gaza are killed or injured daily. The Palestinian Red Crescent says 26 more aid trucks crossed into Gaza Monday amid concerns about worsening humanitarian conditions. Meantime, the Pentagon reports Iran-backed militants launched three new attacks on U.S. military sites in recent days. No injuries or damage reported. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Back here at home, a reminder about a well-known social media trend that is still going strong here in San Antonio. The so-called Kia Challenge focuses on stealing Kias and Hyundais. Kias, Hyundais among top stolen vehicles in San Antonio. San Antonio police tell us that the Hyundai Elantra was its top stolen car in September and five of the top 10 were Kias. A San Antonio woman's Kia Optima was stolen from her driveway earlier this month and she says deputies believe she was a victim of the Kia challenge. I think they estimated that the damages caused were almost $13,000 worth of damage. And it's just going to keep happening until they actually start holding these kids accountable for their actions. Her car back less than 48 hours later with an estimated $13,000 worth of damage. She told Kesa she does not know if any arrests have been made, but she plans to press charges. You can read more about the story on our website at Kesa.com. World Series went west last night, tied at a game of peace between the Rangers and Diamondbacks. Series lead up for grabs in game three. Bottom of the second, San Antonians Josh Young bare hands a throw to beat out the runner at first. Max Scherzer taking the assist on that one. Momentum carries over to the top of the third. Marcus Simeon, it's an RBI single. Then with Simeon on, Corey Seager sends his fifth home run of the postseason over the wall in right field. Rangers go on to win it 3-1 and retake the lead in the series two games to one. Pivotal game four goes down tonight at 7.03 p.m. in Phoenix. Looking ahead on the hardwood, the Spurs road trip continues. They'll take on the Phoenix Suns tonight at 9 and on Thursday night, also at 9 o'clock. Then they'll come home uh, this next Sunday and host the Toronto Raptors at 2.30 p.m. And real quick, in NBA news, big blockbuster trade in the NBA. Um, James Harden. Yes, I just blanked. James Harden traded from the Sixers to the L.A. Clippers. Ah, that should be interesting. It's a huge trade. Yeah. 6, 11, 45 degrees. And still to come, there's a lot going on across the Alamo City for Halloween. How locals can save money today at the San Antonio Zoo. After the break, it's important to be mindful of your pets later tonight during Halloween. How you can make things fun for everyone. And let's look out there with a live cam this Halloween morning. We are starting cold, 45 degrees. Definitely bundle up on your way out. We'll be right back. 615, welcome back. It's finally time for tricks and treats. It is important to have fun tonight, though. Also, be mindful of your pets. So Halloween can be stressful and dangerous for them. Between all the people coming up to your home, the costumes, decorations, and candy, your dogs and cats might get a little spooked. So veterinarians say it is important to have your pet's ID and microchipped up to date just in case they get out. And if you're dressing them up, make sure they can still walk freely in their costume decorations at home and outside can pose as choking hazards. So keep them away from anything they can easily swallow. And when it comes to candy, don't feed anything to your pets. The candy or wrappers could lead to a trip to the emergency vet. Any of that packaging, if ingested and swallowed by our pets, can cause an intestinal blockage. And that's something we want to avoid as well. You can also keep your pet calm. Aw, this I want puppy. That puppy. I know, right? <laughs> By giving them some treats and keeping them in a room away from all the action. All right, happening today, San Antonio Zoo hosting Locals Day for Bear County residents. That means tickets are just $8 with proof of Bear County residency. And if you head to the zoo today, you can check out Zubu, the non-scary Halloween celebration. It includes costume parties, live music, dance parties, and more. Yeah, Zubu's always a good time. Uh, time now, 617, and looks like the roads are okay from here. Let's check in with RJ. Yeah. Um, all right. 
a look right now at I-10 at Hebner. We were talking about that stalled vehicle there earlier. That has been cleared out, so that is good news for our drivers on the northwest side. And uh, we still have a stalled vehicle being reported there, I-35 at Benz Engelman Road. There was an emergency crew there a little bit earlier. I've seen a few kind of just kind of come and go in this ve in this area, but uh, as you can see, traffic still moving along pretty smooth right now. As we take a look at our maps, you can see again, our maps are indicating that traffic is still getting, getting through there. The northbound lanes of 35 at Benz Engelman Road. Of course, this is affecting maybe some traffic out there in the Fort Sam area, so something to kind of keep in mind. As we take a look at our citywide map, traffic for the most part, things looking good right now. Um, there has been a reported stalled vehicle on the south side over there by I-10 eastbound at Roosevelt. I'll take a look at the cameras here in just a bit and see if there's anything that we can find out there to kind of give us a little bit more of an indication as to what is going on. But uh, one more quick look at Transguide traffic cameras. See right there, traffic moving along pretty smooth is there as well. So this is good news. Drivers, of course, things were a little bit wet out in the roads past couple of days, but uh, things so far so good if you want to head out right now. Thank you, RJ. All right, let's roll the bus. <laughs> Yay. Uh, <laughs> that was a the, the spooky. I know. A spooky buzz. Halloween kind of thing there. So uh, this morning, temperature is going to be pretty steady. A couple of leftover showers around the area. It's going to clear out very nicely. We're going to make it up to 60 later on today. Still kind of breezy, but then when the wind settles down, it's going to cool off very quickly. All right. Are you ready for this graphic? Yes. Here we go. Yeah. Look here. And there are the cat's eyes. Aww, I wanna, let me let me go back and start this one over again because this is really cool. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and this I is love, for, oh, and the little the witch going across the moon. That's pretty cute. Halloween for yeah, it's going to uh, dip down into the fifties later on this evening, and uh, it is definitely going to be on the uh, the chilly side. So make sure you dress appropriate. Look at this picture. Is this the cutest thing in the world? Can you imagine if that little one came up to your door saying trick or treat? Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect shot. All right, lots of clouds out there. Notice how it looks like and got a pretty good sheen on the road. So it is still damp out there. This is 10 looking out to the uh, north and west past the medical center. We uh, we've had a couple of showers in and around town. The majority of the rain, obviously this batch, which extends from Carn City and just to the south of Floresville and then further on out here to the west, uh, just past Pierce. All you got a Another line of rain from Dilly extending up to the north, and that's going to be crossing I-35 right there around Pearsall. A little bit closer into town, we still have a couple of uh, sprinkly showers moving in here on the west side, coming right across and going through just about Castroville and then coming right in on 90 on the west side of town. So we'll still have a couple little light sprinkly showers, like I said, left over around here this morning. All right, jump ahead to tonight then. We have freeze warnings that have been issued. They go into effect overnight for the hill country does not include Bear County, but northwest portions up there around Bulverde, it's going to be really close to it. So you want to watch it with some of the, uh, the tender vegetation out there in parts of the hill country. One of the reasons why it is uh, going to be getting so cold, you got to have some very dry air in place. And of course, we've got a very dry air, low humidity around here, clear skies, light wind. But look what happens now. Thursday is still going to be pleasant. As we go into Friday and the weekend, humidity is really going to start to come back in here. So when you get above 60, that's always that threshold number. That's when you start to feel the humidity, and that's going to be the case over the weekend. Here's what's going on. Upper level winds. We had a big mass of cold air up there in the, uh, the Great Lakes, northern Mississippi Valley. That's been pulling down that cold air with that front that moved on in here. Like I said, it's still going to be the case tonight and tomorrow. Nice on Thursday. Then notice how these upper level wind lines kind of just move right along the northern tier of the United States, what we call kind of a zonal pattern. You don't really get anything in a, uh, a pattern like this as far as any rain producers. So we've got nothing in the forecast after today. Also, as this moves up, this is going to allow some warmer air to move on in here. We may have a few clouds trying to slide on in here by uh, Friday. But as we go into the weekend, it's definitely going to be on the, the warmer side. And next week, we're starting to see maybe a couple of little little kinks in this uh, jet stream somewhat getting back to a roller coaster action. So hopefully there's going to be another front that moves on through here by maybe the mid to latter portion of next week as it's looking right now. So here's what it looks like today. 60 lots of sunshine later on today. 
and then it's going to be cold tonight. We get down into the mid 30s, 62 then tomorrow afternoon. Another chilly start, another nice warm up on Thursday. Then a couple more clouds on Friday. We really start to warm up normal high temperature on Friday, but it's up into the 80s with more humidity over the weekend. Set your clocks back Saturday night. We'll be back. When you have chronic kidney disease, there are places you'd like to be. Like here. And here. Not so much here. Farsica reduces the risk of kidney failure, which can lead to dialysis. Farsica. Farsica can cause serious side effects, including ketoacidosis that may be fatal, dehydration, urinary tract or genital yeast infections, and low blood sugar. A rare life-threatening bacterial infection in the skin of the perineum could occur. Stop taking Farsiga and call your doctor right away if you have symptoms of this infection, an allergic reaction, or ketoacidosis. When you have chronic kidney disease, it's time to ask your doctor for Farsiga because there are places you want to be. If you can't afford your medication, AstraZeneca may be able to help. Farsiga. Welcome back, everybody. In your morning consumer headlines, an AI executive order. President Biden wants agencies to come up with safety guidelines for the technology. His order has eight goals, including protecting privacy. The order calls on the government to develop standards for cybersecurity programs. Meanwhile, Google's new credential manager will arrive on Android devices starting tomorrow. The new feature will help manage the different login methods on your phone and... The move marks the start of the next phase of Google's conversion to pass keys, which are more secure than regular passwords. Halloween. What's Rooney dressed as this year? Uh, Oogie Boogie from the Nightmare Before Christmas. Okay. Very <laughs> yeah. popular film. Yeah. 626, 45 degrees. Look out there with Transguide. Oh, a little more people on the roadways this morning looking at I-10 at Presa, and we're going to be checking in with RJ Marcus very soon. This morning on GMSA, the San Antonio community is rallying to help a local high school marching band after heavy rain damaged some instruments last weekend. We'll tell you what's being done for the students. Plus, kids are not the only ones enjoying treats this Halloween, thanks to the Bulverde Area Humane Society, what they're doing for their adoptable dogs and cats. Outside with live cam right now, waiting for the sun to come up. It's still wet and chilly out there. That's a trick or a treat, depending on who you talk to here in South Texas. Hi, good morning. Happy Halloween. Yeah. It's 630. Got to be a busy evening, especially on a school night. Mike is here yeah. with that all important Halloween forecast last day of October. Yeah. yeah, that is just hard to believe. You know, we always say once Labor Day hits, you know, the rest of the year kind of kind of sails by here. But uh, yeah, it is going to be fantastic for trick or treating. By the way, I got to give a quick shout out. Fiona just texted me and said that her daughter Sloan is watching us right now. So oh, hi, Sloan, hi. while she's eating her breakfast. Just she was on the show just the other day. So oh, okay. what is she going to be for Halloween? Do you know? Uh, she's taking some pictures as a, uh, a princess. Oh, so, yeah. Princess Sloan. Yes, oh, indeed. Cute. All right. We got uh, still kind of damp roads out there right around 10 over there by the uh, by the medical center. 46 degrees. So it's it's chilly out there. Plus, with some of this rain around, we've got a dew point of 33 and then wind is out of the north at nine miles per hour. So, of course, that gives you that little bit of wind chill. Going to show you that in a second. Here's what it looks like on radar right now. Of course, we've got the uh, bigger batch of rain down to the south, but in and around San Antonio. We're starting to see these few showers come in here just about right along 90 just to the north of Castroville coming in on the uh, the west side and then right there by John Jay High School sliding in toward downtown. This is very, very light rain, but it is obviously enough that it's making the roads kind of damp and adding to kind of that that chill out there. So we'll still continue to see some of these light little sprinkly showers just sort of scattered about the area throughout the rest of the morning. And then again, there's the uh, the bigger batch of rain, even a couple of well, a decent shower there just to the southeast of Dilly, and this is all sliding off to the east. So this is going to be it. We'll still keep some of these showers around this morning. Then that's going to clear on out, and that's going to take the clouds with it as well later on this morning. Temperatures right now, pretty much all everybody's in the 40s with the exception of Lost Maples. 
bit of a breeze out there, so that gives us that uh, slight bit of a wind chill to deal with. Shave off a couple of notches, just enough to add that little zing to some of these cool, damp temperatures. Mold is moderate, ragweed grass both on the uh, low side, and this morning again, leftover shower, cool, then we clear on out, 60 for a high temperature, and for trick-or-treating, clear and chilly. Tomorrow, it's going to be cold. Freeze warnings for portions of the hill country, specifically for trick-or-treating. Sun goes down just about 10 minutes till 7. And as that sun gets lower in the sky late this afternoon, right around dinner time, or late afternoon, I should say, that's when we are going to uh, start to cool down, and it's going to be down in the 50s. So, yeah, Jack, it's going to be a pretty good idea for the trick-or-treaters. Weekend forecast coming up. Traffic Authority, RJ, what's going on? All right, Mike, so things starting to pick up as we kind of expect during the 6 o'clock hour. We have a stalled vehicle here on the eastbound lanes of I-10 at Presa. You can see that we still have traffic getting through there, but it is causing a little bit of a mess back there for our drivers there on the uh, near south side. So uh, earlier I was, I was seeing this, it was like on Roosevelt. I was trying to find it. I thought it's further down on Loop 410. No, this is actually closer to downtown. So a little bit south of downtown, south of King William. This is kind of what we're looking at. And that's exactly what our maps are showing right now. You can see that we have this stalled vehicle eastbound lanes at Roosevelt Avenue. Now there is something still further south that we have to let you know about. Is there's another stalled vehicle there, eastbound lanes of Loop 410 at Morrison Road. But traffic still seems to be moving along pretty smooth in that area. Rest of the city, we still have our stalled vehicle there on Ben's Engelman a Road at I-35 north but again a lot of green on our screen so this is good news as people make their way in and around san antonio mark and stephanie back to you guys thank you rj the question of how a fire started at a local apartment complex is taking a backseat to how much damage it did at least that is the case for people who live there katrina weber live over on hebner road near fredericksburg where they're still waiting for word about their homes katrina we know it is still dark out there but what can you see well, we see a whole different scene from what we've been seeing all morning. Firefighters have wrapped up uh, their hoses. They're about to leave the scene, but what is left behind is a mess uh, building in the dark because there's no electricity or water there now as a result of this fire. Uh, firefighters say that it did start in a third floor apartment. It seems that there was a, a blower motor that caught fire in the bathroom of that apartment, sent fire up into the attic. And so uh, that did cause some smoke damage throughout the building uh, also damaged to that one apartment. They had to get in there, tear open part of the roof and pour water down there. So at least one other apartment does have water damage as well. Now, just within the last few minutes, people have started going back into their apartments to try to see what damage was done, what they can collect and then find another place to stay because firefighters tell us they won't be able to stay here as long as they have no electricity and no water. Uh, all that's been shut off again as a result of this fire. And firefighters did confirm for us that no one was hurt. Reporting live in the Medical Center, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thanks, Katrina. Also new this morning on Jordanton, a wanted man is now in custody. Police say David Garcia was arrested after escaping Jordanton police Monday afternoon. We're told he ran from officers attempting to execute an arrest warrant on him. He was believed to be an armed and, da armed and dangerous at the time of his escape. Officials were able to track him down a little before 8 last night. Out this morning, a new episode of the Texas Crime Stories podcast. In this episode, a Mother's Day tragedy. You may recall the story of a six-year-old dying in her mother's arms. Right now, three years later, the community is shocked again after the suspect was given a 25-year plea deal. Our Eric Hernandez and Lee Waldman break it all down. The full episode is out now. You can check it out on KSET.com, our YouTube channel, or wherever you get your podcasts. You still have time to vote early in the November 7th election. Voters will see 14 propositions on the ballot that will either create or change state funding. There's also local races to decide on, depending on your precinct. See a full list of voting locations and a sample ballot. Just scan this QR code on your screen. Early voting ends November 3rd. That is this Friday. Meanwhile, the Churchill High School marching band says it's dealing with nearly $28,000 in damaged equipment after a performance in heavy rainfall this past weekend. As John Paul Barajas reports, the show must go on, and he shows us how the band is getting by and how you can help.
I've never seen this much rain at a composition before, so it was a completely new experience for me. I couldn't help but worry about all of that like technology that was just getting drenched. Performing at the Waco Band of America's Championship this past weekend brought new challenges for the Winston Churchill High School Band, like navigating a downpour, which then led to nearly $28,000 worth of damaged equipment. Lots of stress uh, because, you know, the, the district will provide us um, some funds. Our campus will provide us some funds. Uh, the students put in um, some fees at the start of the year to kind of offset some costs, but those are for repairs, and, uh, but not of this magnitude. Band director Amanda Stevenson says heavy rain moved in during the performance, but her students didn't miss a beat, qualifying for the finals, which was eventually canceled for weather. But Saturday's show put this Thursday senior night and Friday's competition at the Alamo Dome in question with instruments out of commission. That's until... Over 40 instruments that have come to us today. We've calibrated their current instruments to sound really great at a certain location um, placement on the horn. And then now that these are brand new, we're going to start from scratch retuning. Um, they're, they're great instruments, but they are borrowed. So. Stevenson tells us several local schools donated the instruments. Some will stay with the Churchill Band. Others are just on loan for the next few weeks while the band tries to finish out the season. It felt like it was just slipping in between our fingers, but I feel like that feeling for me and a lot of band just dissipated very quickly when we learned of all the support. But the donated instruments are just a temporary fix while the band raises money for repairs where we need to figure out, okay, how are we going to, how do these new instruments play? How are they different from the ones that we were using? Uh, but once we get past that stage, I feel like we'll be good after that. And at that point, it's just, we're going to use that as fuel for motivation. John Paul Barajas, KSA 12 years. And KSA and our community partners want to remind you to roll up your sleeves and get your flu shot. There is one more chance for you to get a free vaccine courtesy of Bear County and University Health. That's coming up this Saturday, November 4th from 8 a.m. to noon. So if you want to register, just head over to ksetcommunity.com. 639, now 45 degrees. Just ahead, a chilling night is coming up for trick-or-treaters. In more ways than one, what you need to know to keep your family safe before the kids go knocking on doors. Welcome back at 642. So the costumes are picked out and the kids are ready to clean up on candy. But Metro Health has a few quick reminders for trick-or-treaters. Adults are encouraged to scan all candy for holes or tears as well as expiration dates. And be careful with homemade good goodies from someone you do not know. You can find the full list of safety suggestions on ksat.com. And check out this new video from the Bulverde Area Humane Society. This was the third annual trick or treat event for their adoptable dogs and cats. It is important to not only the shelter's volunteers, but the future furry family members. So they get to enjoy some treats before the ultimate jackpot. Volunteers say every year the event is a driving force for the shelter. These donations typically will last us almost an entire year. Um, I know just recently we just ran out of the dog treats that we got from this event last year. I've been here eight years and I've been with a dog here that's been here for seven. And people don't see the how they degrade every year, you know, the behaviors. I, I mean, this is a no-kill shelter, but it's not a place for a dog to live. The Bulverde Area Humane Society wants the community to know their animals have already written their Christmas list this year, and a warm home is at the very top Aww. of that list, I know. However, stocking stuffers like garbage bags and paper towels are always welcomed. I follow them on Facebook. They do a great job up there in Bulverde. Well, happening today, if you're looking for some fun Halloween events to take kids to, some of the San Antonio Public Libraries are holding events. Kids can build all things Halloween with Legos at San Pedro Li Library from 4 to 6 p.m. You can come in costume for a local little trick-or-treating, too. And from 6 to 7 at the Thousand Oaks Library, they're going to have Halloween story time. You can wear your costume. And for a look at all this information, once again, just look for the story on kset.com in our Halloween section. Time check, just about 6.45. Let's check in with RJ with this spooky roadways. Yeah, a little scary out there, especially for our drivers on the near south side. I-10 Presa, our trans guide uh, traffic camera, looking at a stalled vehicle there, eastbound lanes at Roosevelt Avenue. You can see that we have, doing, we have emergency crews there. Traffic is getting through the area, but again, something that is uh, starting to, you can see we're starting to see some delays build up here as well. Also want to let you know about a stalled vehicle, I-35 northbound at US 
90. So Burbank High School is right here. And I think we have a camera as we take one more quick look at our maps outside. i just let you know that traffic is looking pretty good outside the rest of the area. We'll take one more look. Okay, there we go. I-35 northbound at Burbank. Um, this is our camera. You can see it looks like an 18 wheelers off to the side of the road. Again, TxDOT kind of just reporting it as an incident for the moment. See if we get a little bit more information before anyone taking the kiddos out to Burbank High School. Probably something you're going to have to deal with this fair, morning. Fair enough. Just saw a cute treat on uh, Facebook. Somebody had taken hot dogs and you know you can wrap crescent rolls yeah. and dough around it. They did it like a mummy with a couple oh, of eyes oh, at the very cute. top. It was adorable. I love that stuff. <laughs> that would be fun for little trick-or-treaters yeah. or if you're having a little party for some of the kids <laughs> or something like that. So, you know, one thing we always love about October around here when we have the skeleton pictures and of course uh. today would probably be the last day for that. And uh, it was pretty windy around here yesterday. So whether a uh, flying a kite or a winged costume. Oh, cool. Yes. But again, they don't have any brains. Uh -huh. ah. <laughs> Thanks again to the Denote family in Stone Oak for a great month of yes. skeleton displays. We loved them. They need to get like a bunch of turkeys now and have them doing things for them. <laughs> you, you think so? Sure, why not? Go for it. Oh Mike. <laughs> We'll show the pictures. And anyway, thank you very much for those pictures. All right. Uh, still got, uh, again, it looks like sort of damp out there right around I-10 by the Medical Center. We still have a few light little leftover showers, some up there around the Grange and the Big Batch further on down to the south. But here in town, as you can see, we've got this uh, bat from Rio Medina. Moving into the uh, west side of San Antonio and right through downtown, just a few light little sprinkles. I mean, this is not amounting to a hill of beans, but it's just enough, obviously, to keep the roads on the damp side. So if you are heading in on a lot of the uh, the major roadways, 10, 281, even uh, 35 coming in from the northeast side, 90 coming in from the west side, you're going to run into a few of these damp roads around here. And that's just going to be for the rest of the morning. Of course, we've got the wider area of rain and again, maybe a few decent showers down here to the south, but not really amounting to too much of anything. And then this is going to be the end of it as far as the rain is concerned. So yesterday we did hit uh, the mid to upper 40s and that was in the evening hours. But throughout the day, we pretty much stayed just in the low to mid 40s. Today, different story. going to make it up to 60 here in town. And it's going to be upper 50s, low 60s all around the metropolitan area. Still going to be well below normal, but it's going to be just a fantastic day with all that sunshine out there. Then the clear skies overnight tonight, light wind, dry air, perfect radiational cooling. So that's going to allow temperatures to really dip down by tomorrow morning. So we do have freeze warnings that have been issued for the hill country. Doesn't include Bear County or uh, Kamal County, but some of these, you know, up there in the low lying areas, northwest, northern Bear County, you may touch freezing in your backyard and especially out there in the hill country. So you know, just want to watch it with some of the uh, the tender vegetation. All right, here's the satellite and radar loop combined. And we're starting to already see things clear out just a little bit way out there to the northwest of us. And this will all continue to work its way to the east. And you can see it's not a big batch of rain. And this is all the moisture that's been pumped in here from the Pacific Ocean up to the north. Yeah, that's a cold Halloween up there in Wisconsin, as well as Michigan with some of the snow up there. And you can see how that cold air is coming in there from Canada. So that's the batch of cold air that has been working its way on south and what we are experiencing right now that's been pulled on in here. But that batch of cold air is going to continue to work its way off to the east. And then now we still, like I said, have a cold morning tomorrow with those freezes in the hill country. It'll be pleasantly chilly on Thursday. Things do start to warm up though as these upper level wind lines pretty much go straight west to east and that's going to keep the cold air up there to the north and actually allow us to heat up going into this weekend, which also includes some more humidity around here. So today, 60. Good looking afternoon. Great evening for trick or treating, but wear a jacket down to 36 tomorrow morning here in town. Like I said, a freeze in parts of the hill country up to 62, then starting off chilly again on Thursday down to 40, 65 high temperature closer to normal on Friday. A few more clouds, then the heat comes back. Low to mid 80s over the weekend and some humidity, but the good news is you get to set your clocks back. Yeah. One of my favorite days. And it's a nice day for Halloween, too. It's going to be great for Halloween tonight. Thank you, Mike. Just about 10 till 45 degrees out of the airport.
Let's look out there with live cam. Like Mark said, 45 degrees, so definitely grab that jacket and prepare for Halloween. We'll be right back. In this morning's GMA First Look, it's Halloween, a day of tricks, treats, and Christmas sales. Yeah, you heard that right. Give a little love. Start the holidays at Macy's. For this morning, the advertising around holiday sales is clear. Act now to save. This Sunday through Tuesday only, get 50% off everything online only at oldnavy.ca. Target announcing they're dropping new deals every week leading up to Black Friday. It's a great way for brands to really buzz up interest in shopping for the holidays early. And of course, they always love to do it as early as possible. So this year is no different. You got this. We got you. But experts note the lowest prices of the year are usually a little closer to Thanksgiving. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have the expert advice you need to win the holiday shopping season, no matter how early it's starting. With your GMA First Look, I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, Oakland, California. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, our team is on the ground in Israel as the war enters a new phase. And the first American-Israeli hostage freed by Hamas is back on U.S. soil as Israel forces the move deeper into Gaza. And a story we've all been following so closely. We are now hearing from Matthew Perry's Friends co-stars for the first time since his sudden passing. You'll see those stories and so much more here on GMA. Another successful Muertos Fest is in the books. If you didn't get a chance to go by this past weekend, you can still check out all the altars on display by watching our special broadcast coming up tomorrow night. Yeah, it was really beautiful. We're going to be airing a recap of this weekend's festivities on air and online tomorrow from 8 to 10 p.m. And we're going to share special stories from Muertos Fest, so make sure to tune in. About 5 till 7. Let's go ahead and check back with RJ. All right, guys, a couple of things we're following here as we wrap up our 6 o'clock hour. Still have that uh, stalled vehicle there, I-10 at Presa, actually at Roosevelt. This is backing up traffic all the way to Pro Band. We'll take a quick look there. You can see it's a pretty good mess out there, so south side drivers keep in mind this one. Also, there on the south side, I-35 northbound at Burbank. Uh, this is basically I-35 at US-90, so it's now being reported as a stalled. 18-wheeler, as you can see right there. So traffic affecting uh, parents and students headed out to Burbank High School. Be careful out on the roads today and the neighborhoods with trick-or-treaters out there. Good advice. Still a couple of leftover sprinkles, and you can see those are almost dying down there in and around town. We still have those showers down around uh, Carnes County, Southern Wilson, Atascosa, near Pearsall. Everything's sliding off to the east. We'll still keep a couple of leftover showers around this morning. Temperatures, we've got a little bit of a wind chill, so 40s and even some 30s is what it feels like out there. And then we're going to be clearing out later on today, 60 for a high temperature. For trick-or-treating, it's going to be dropping into the 50s. It's going to cool off fairly quickly tonight so a jacket's a really good idea and then tomorrow very cold freeze in the hill country and then hot this weekend we'll prepare for that happy halloween guys take it easy driving around sunset watch for trick or